Painful Final Days and Tragic Death of Stuart Whitman Stuart Whitman, the handsome and versatile Hollywood actor who graced the silver screen for over five decades, left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. From his powerful portrayal of Jim Fuller in the 1958 film The Defiant Ones, which earned him an Academy Award nomination, to his role as Marshal Jim Crown in the 1967 television series Cimarron Strip, Whitman established himself as a leading man in Hollywood. However, his life was not without struggles, and in his final years, Whitman battled a series of health issues that led to a tragic end. In this article, we'll delve into the painful final days and untimely death of Stuart Whitman, a Hollywood icon. Stuart Whitman was a man with big dreams from an early age. Born as Stuart Maxwell Whitman on February 1, 1928 in San Francisco, California, he was the eldest of two sons to Cecilia and Joseph Whitman, a realtor. He always wanted to pursue a career in acting, and he worked hard to achieve his goals. After completing his studies, Stu graduated from Hollywood High School in 1945. He was eager to make a name for himself in the entertainment industry, and soon after, he joined the Army Corps of Engineers for a three-year stint. Although he was in the military, he continued to nurture his love for acting. Stu was determined to succeed, and his hard work paid off when he was honorably discharged from the military. He was ready to take on Hollywood and make his dreams a reality. Stu's journey to becoming a successful actor was just beginning, but he was well on his way. Stuart Whitman was not just a talented actor, but also an accomplished athlete. He started his athletic career as a light heavyweight boxer and had a remarkable record, winning all but one of his fights. Unfortunately, a broken nose in one of his matches forced him to retire from the ring. Despite this setback, Whitman continued pursuing his athletic interests, playing football while studying law and drama at Los Angeles City College. He also underwent further acting training at the Ben Bard Drama School in Hollywood, which proved to be a wise decision as he caught the attention of talent scouts. Soon he landed bit parts in several movies, starting with the sci-fi classics When Worlds Collide 1951 and The Day the Earth Stood Still 1951. Whitman's career was on the rise and his talent and dedication would lead him to become one of Hollywood's most beloved actors. Stuart Whitman's career received a boost from his appearances on television, including an episode of Dr. Christian in 1956, which was written by Gene Roddenberry and starred McDonald Carey. This led to his first starring role in the movie Johnny Trouble, 1957, where he played a wild ex-Marine. The following year, he signed a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox. Whitman's career as a leading actor took off when he landed the part of a victim child molester in The Mark, 1961, a British production shot in the vicinity of Dublin. Although the role had initially been intended for Richard Burton, the Welsh actor was unavailable due to his commitment to Broadway's Camelot. Whitman brought a sense of humanity to the unsympathetic role, which earned him an Oscar nomination. Whitman's impressive acting skills helped him gain recognition and secure leading roles in many films, including Convicts 4, 1962, Shock Treatment, 1964, and The Sound and the Fury, 1959. In addition to his work in film, Whitman also made appearances in numerous TV shows, including The FBI, The Streets of San Francisco, and Murder, She Wrote. Stuart Whitman's acting career had taken off, and he was in high demand for second lead roles. His ruggedly handsome looks were well suited for these roles, and he made a name for himself playing characters like New Orleans gambler Paul Regret and Michael Curtis's sprawling western The Comancheros, 1961. His performance earned him a nomination for a Golden Laurel Award for Best Action Performance. Interestingly, the role of Paul Regret had already been cast, but Whitman was determined to land the part. He convinced John Wayne, who was producing the film, to give him the role instead. Wayne ended up directing much of the film himself as Curtis was seriously ill with cancer and died within six months of the picture's release. 
Stuart Whitman's acting career took him across the globe, with roles in films shot in Italy, Spain, Britain, and the US. He played the hero in films such as The Longest Day, 1962, and Shock Treatment, 1964, but also embraced edgier roles in moves like Signpost to Murder, 1964, Sands of the Kalahari, 1965, and An American Dream, 1966. One of his most chilling roles was in Guyana, Cult of the Damned, 1979, where he portrayed the fanatical leader of a cult that leads his followers to mass suicide. Whitman also made numerous appearances on TV shows and miniseries with frequent roles on Fantasy Island 1977, Knott's Landing 1979, and Murder, She Wrote 1984. Stuart Whitman was a self-proclaimed workaholic who continued to act on screen despite no longer needing the money. He had established a lucrative sideline as a real estate developer. In October 1980, Whitman bought the rights to Gunga Din, hoping to produce the star in a new adaptation of the Rudyard Kipling classic, but unfortunately, nothing came of it. After his unsuccessful attempt at producing the film, Whitman spent the remaining years of his life on his ranch in Montecito in Santa Barbara County. According to his family, he enjoyed his time on the ranch, which was located near the homes of his friends and neighbors, including Jane Russell and Robert Mitchum. Whitman spent his days pursuing his fondness for Jack Daniel's whiskey, Padron cigars, and getting his hands dirty with work on his ranch. He enjoyed watching the birds and gazing out upon the Pacific Ocean. On March 16, 2020, the Hollywood industry lost a legend. Stuart Whitman, a beloved actor, passed away at his home in Montecito, California after battling skin cancer. He was 92 years old. Whitman was a prominent figure in the entertainment industry with a career spanning over five decades. He starred in many well-known films such as The Comancheros, The Longest Day, and Those Magnificent Men and Their Flying Machines. Throughout his career, Whitman received numerous accolades for his work, including an Academy Award nomination for his performance in The Mark, a film that tackled the issue of mental illness. He was also recognized for his contributions to the film industry with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Whitman was more than just an actor. He was a loving husband, father, and grandfather. He had a passion for horseback riding and was known for his charitable work with organizations such as the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Whitman's death was a shock to many of his fans and colleagues in the entertainment industry. Tributes poured in from around the world with many expressing their condolences and sharing fond memories of the talented actor. Despite the sadness surrounding his passing, Whitman's legacy will continue to live on through his work and the impact he had on the film industry. Goodbye, Stuart Whitman, and may you rest in peace.